Well, I'm going to go on with the fun part now and show some of the things the kiln can be used for. I'll put in the colors I'm going to use today. And also I've got a, a, a full-size kiln brick here that I'm going to set down right underneath the entrance to the pickup plate so that when I pull out the plate it, it sits nicely on the brick. And I've got four little pieces of dichroic glass that I've cut and I'm going to lay them face up on the pickup plate. So I'm going to make a bead with a, a black core that'll show up the best with the dichroic glass. So I'll make a very a very thin layer of black here. And then I'll pick up the dichroic pieces. Now notice how I'm marbling the tip of the glass on this graphite pad before I put it back in the kiln. The reason for that is I don't want to put back a hot sticky piece of glass that might stick to the rod beside it, but it could also stick to the aluminum, uh, the aluminum sheet that's in there as well. So I'm just going to heat this up a little bit and, and even it out before I start to pick up the pieces that are preheating. I want the length of this to be about the same length as the pieces I'm picking up. I also don't want the bead to be very hot when I'm picking up the pieces because I don't want to, I don't want to squash it too much. So I'm just going to heat up one side only. And then pick up one piece of dichroic glass. Now I'm going to heat up the other side only and pick up a second piece. Now I can put this directly into the flame because I put the dichroic glass with the coating side face up on the pickup plate so that means that it's now protected and I can't burn it off with the torch flame. There, I've heated it up a little bit, and now I'm going to close the drawer so I don't need any more parts. And I'm going to put a transparent turquoise glass on it now. And again, I'm rolling the tip to cool it a little bit before I put the glass back in the kiln. And now I'm putting a transparent blue on. And I'll just heat this up a little bit before I do the final decorating. So as you can see, it greatly speeds up the making of the bead when the glass has been preheated and the pickup parts have been preheated. So now I'm going to take this, this filigrana or filigree rod that has a, it's a clear rod with a colored core and I'm going to twist it onto the bead.
probably won't show up very well in the video, but what I'm trying to demonstrate here is the use of the kiln. I'm not trying to demonstrate how to make a bead. Okay, I also have this tool here, which is like a little mini glory hole. And when I'm preheating, or when I'm, when I'm doing the final heating on a, a big chunk of glass like this, I'll put it in the flame, and I'll cup the tip of the flame with this, and that helps to heat it up a lot faster. I'm not losing all of this heat. I made this out of a piece of kiln brick, and I hollowed out the inside, and put a very long screw through it to a wooden handle. And it saves a lot of time. Here, I'll hold it this way so maybe it can be it can be seen in the video a little bit better. It just fires that heat right back from all sides. Okay, and now I'm just going to rake through it a little bit with my kitchen knife. Give it that Egyptian look and do the final shaping. Okay. And I'll show putting the finished bead in the kiln for annealing. So here's a look at the bead that I demonstrated the use of the kiln with yesterday. Uh, you can't really see the transparent detail very well on video, but it's quite striking the way it turns out. So this is a good example of the kind of bead that you need a kiln to make because its size is so large that it needs to be annealed. Um, this one here is probably an inch and an eighth in height and probably five eighths or three quarters of an inch in diameter. So it's definitely the, the kind of bead that can't be cooled in vermiculite without it cracking.